there are some mysteries that I encountered decades ago that I never solved. One was, how did dielectrics work? The textbook explanation left me puzzled. And I'm not necessarily fast at puzzles, but I will clamp on them and think about them even for decades. I am a research professor at NPS, and about seven years ago I came here to the position I have now in the Energy Academic Group. I kind of consider myself a little bit more philosophical in the traditional sense of a scientist, saying that I think that if you really understand something at its very basic level, it should be simple and you should be able to build up whatever ideas you have and create something larger. I've been working with Dr. Phillips for the last year or so on developing a new kind of super dielectric material called punch layer super dielectric material uh, for use in parallel plate capacitors. My notion was the way a dielectric works is it cancels the field produced by the charges on the electrodes. I'm not going into too much detail, that should lead to the ability to store more electrons at the same voltage, which is sort of equivalent to a height in terms of energy. And from that, I said, well, then what we need to do is devise dielectrics that are better at field canceling than the traditional ones we use now. So I created a new kind of dielectric based on beach sand. With an increase in the dipole length and density, there was a increase in total capacitance. Um, we also observed very high dielectric values. So we were getting stuff as high as 10 to the ninth. With typical or the best conventional dielectrics, you see something on the order of a thousand. So uh, this is pretty extraordinary. In a capacitor, the only thing you're moving is charges. There's no chemistry going on. So they're inherently more robust. Plus our designs, there's no lithium, there's no cobalt. There's no expensive materials whatsoever in our capacitors. It's beach sand with sodium chloride. Hopefully this research will turn into something the Navy could use as a, a viable storage energy device in energy magazines for use on naval vessels to feed very power hungry systems like directed energy weapons. The most known would be the electromagnetic railgun. A capacitor can charge as quickly as you can fill your gas tank with gasoline, probably faster. It just won't be speed alone that will change. It'll be the footprint of the, of the power source. So if we can make the size of the energy storage unit, the same as the energy storage unit you would have if you use batteries, if we can get these capacitors to work, all of a sudden we'll say, oh, we'll replace that same volume with capacitors. You can replenish your energy in a couple hundred seconds. So this is really inexpensive, very robust, and we're predicting that we're gonna be able to device within a, a year's time frame, probably less, devices with energy densities approaching those of lithium ion batteries and then surpass them. I'm always an optimist. Come back in a year and ask me where we are.